Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Unsurprisingly, my main focus today is going to be GDC, and we're going to be focusing on Intel today as they had their conference late last night, but before I get into that, I just want to quickly say that Paul was very kindly granted an interview with Intel's Chris Hook, and that interview is going to be up tomorrow, so you can look forward to that. But let's focus on what Intel had to share, because there is a lot I do mean a lot to get through. Now the first thing is actually their graphics command center. Now you may recall that not too long ago Intel released a sort of teaser trailer as it were for the upcoming sort of graphics command center which is obviously going to be the sort of base operations for tweaking and the all important support that we have shown, we have learned, sorry, is very much make or break. And this is going to be for their existing line and of course future line of GPUs on Gen 11 and of course Gen 12. Now I do have a bit of a statement here from Intel Graphics which reads, quotes, the Intel Graphics Command Center is an application that helps consumers optimize their experience with Intel Graphics built from the ground up and based on community feedback. The Intel Graphics Command Center is designed for simplicity and ease of use with a modern user interface, automatic game detection and one-click game optimization. Additionally, the Intel Graphics Command Center helps consumers understand settings with simple explanations and before and after images to recognize how each setting will affect their hardware. So that pretty much covers all of the important sort of points as it were, the features that it's going to be having. The one-click optimization support for games is obviously pretty damn important and I really like the idea of the before and after images so you can kind of get an idea of how it's going to look and the effect that it's going to have. They have clearly taken inspiration from the existing control panel and if you have any of the CPUs from 6th gen Skylake and up, you can actually already download the Graphics Control Center via the Microsoft Store. So it's not going to be bundled alongside the graphics drivers like NVIDIA and AMD do. It is, as I say, already available on the Windows Store. So if you want to give it a whirl, it is already there for your perusal. Now, speaking of graphics, they did also show off the first concept renders of Intel XE. Give us an idea of what their discrete GPU is actually going to look like. And I will admit it's actually smaller than I expected it would, but it does look very, very cool. We see a single blower type fan, and we also see a backplate as well. And on the side you see a simple sort of cutout shape for the XE logo, which is undoubtedly going to be featuring some form of RGB LED. Now we saw a couple of designs on show, so obviously these are not final, but they did obviously keep the single fan design so pretty much consistent throughout, so while these sort of nitty gritty details of how it's actually going to look, fan placement, that sort of thing may change on the final design, it does seem we're going to be getting a single fan design for the Intel XE. But here is we get to the meat, the bulk of what they had to talk about, and that is actually a buttload of details about the Gen 11 graphics architecture. So buckle up my friends, we've got a lot to dive through. So of course we're going to see Gen 11 arrive first in the form of Ice Lake, and Paul actually did mention to me before I started recording this video that there is actually going to be a bit of an Ice Lake demo taking place today, so he may or may not be covering something on that soon. Hopefully, I'm not going to promise because, you know, I'm not him, but I would imagine he would be doing something on it. Anyway, back to what we do know. The Gen 11 graphics are going to be based on the third gen 10nm FinFET process node, and we're going to be seeing support for Vulkan, OpenGL, OpenCL, DirectX, and Metal as well. And they also said that Gen 11 consists of 64 execution units, or EUs, which increases the core compute capability by 2.67 by 1 over Gen 9, and Gen 11 addresses the corresponding bandwidth needs by improving compression, and also increases L3 cache, and we also see an increase in peak memory bandwidth as well. And they showed some very nice pictures of the actual SoC design. And the main takeaway that I can gather from looking at these is that we're going to be seeing the graphics score taking up the majority of the space when compared to the CPU cores and LLC. And you can also see that it's also broken down into various sub-slices, and Intel obviously calls this their slice architecture design, and we are seeing an improvement here versus the previous graphics architectures. So while we still see one main slice like we saw with Gen 9, again we have a dramatic increase in the amount of sub-slices we see 8 versus 3 of Gen 9. 
So again, just to kind of go over the specs that we do know, we do see those 64 execution units, but we also see up to one T-flops of single precision and two T-flops of half precision compute performance. We also see an increase in the size of the L3 cache and an improvement on the pixel clock rate. But that's not all, my friends. We have yet more from Intel. This was quite a lengthy conference, I'm sure you can appreciate. And we also saw a bunch of high-performance notebook processors announced as well. And if these seem familiar, they should, because we actually had some leaks on these quite a while back now, the H-series processors. And these details from Intel pretty much confirm what we saw in those leaks as we have up to 8 cores and 16 threads on these notebook processors. We see 2 core i9s, 2 core i7s and 2 core i5s making up the H series in total. And again, as we saw in the leaks, the flagship of this is going to be the 9980HK, which is going to be that 8 core 16 threads that I already mentioned, it's going to run up to 5 gigahertz and has 16 megs of L3 cache. The other i9 is the 9880H and that again has the 8 core 16 threads, but we do see a slightly lower max clock speed of 4.8 gigahertz and we also see the ability to overclock. It is going to be fully unlocked on the 9980HK. Now we also see 6 core 6 threads on the i7 9850 and 97 9750 and we see 4.6 and 4.5 gigahertz respectively and each of these has the same amount of L3 cache which is 12 megs. As for the i5s we see 9300H and of course 9400H and these are 4 cores 8 threads unsurprisingly and we see of clocks up to 4.3 gigahertz and 8 megs of L3 cache for the 9400H and then for the 93 we see 4 cores, 8 threads and then again a slightly lower clock speed as you might expect that being 4.10 and the same amount of L3 cache. So again, pretty much a confirmation of what we saw in those previous leaks, so they were pretty much on the money. Overall, Intel had an absolute ton of stuff to share, and of course there's yet more they're hiding close to their chest, which is not ready to share yet, but what they did share has me interested, and I'm pretty damn impressed by what we have seen for the Graphics Command Center. It seems like a silly thing to kind of focus on, but it's very, very important to get right, because obviously driver support is critical, but having all of this stuff, all this support, all these features, is more important than you might realise. You know, we've seen a huge improvement from AMD, for example, with the adrenaline um, sort of interface and of course the drivers along with it as well. And honestly, it's just improved things for any AMD graphics cards owner significantly. So Intel are clearly paying attention here. And while undoubtedly there's going to be things that might come up that need work as we actually play around with them, I haven't actually got around to downloading the, um, the command center yet, but I will have a play and give my thoughts on it at some point, I'm sure. Um, but it, it looks promising, it's, that's what I will say. Undoubtedly there's improvements to be made, but it looks damn promising. It looks like they've been really paying attention. But to move over from the official, we actually have a bit of a leak now. And this is thanks to the well-known leaker Tom Apisak, and this benchmark is actually in Ashes of the Singularity. Now I do want to say before I go into what the benchmarks actually show us that this is undoubtedly an iGPU and is almost certainly that of an engineering sample and of course is going to be touting incomplete drivers alongside all of that. So with all of that in mind, what do we actually see here? Well, we see an average frame rate of 20.4 on the normal batch, but across all batches we see 15.1 average and this is according to the benchmark at 1080p. To put that in some sort of perspective however, so again we see on the normal batch 20.4 frames per second on average on the low 1080p setting, however we saw about 10 FPS on the Intel UHD 620 so that is a significant increase. While it is still low, it is still double of that previous result. Now this is just one benchmark on an engineering sample with early drivers and a low power environment, so we should by no means take this as, yep, this is gospel, this is 110% what we're going to be seeing, the final performance, but it kind of gives us a peek at what Intel perhaps have in store for us for the discrete Gen 11 GPU. So we're going to finish things up today with a move away from Intel as we have something very interesting for the Xbox One. Now you may recall that we reported not too long ago that we'll be seeing an all digital version of the Xbox One X. Sorry, S, should I say, not, not X. Now we have a very interesting report from Windows Central that has surfaced that basically claims that we'll be seeing an all digital Xbox One S on May the 7th. They went so far as to give a specific date 
and apparently it's going to be identical specs wise to the normal Xbox One S except of course it's going to be purely digital and the fact that's missing a disk drive is also going to make it cheaper than its disk variant as well. Now according to Windows Central's report, which of course is going to be linked in the description below this video, Microsoft are not intending to replace any member of the Xbox One family with this, it's just going to be another addition to it, but undoubtedly it is going to be sort of their sort of, sort of lower cost, the cheapest Xbox One. And there's even some very nice box art as well which is included in the Windows Central report. So whether or not you believe this is entirely up to you, but this is not the first time we're hearing of it. It's even got a code name by the name of Maverick. So it would make sense. You know, we've heard rumblings that Microsoft have wanted to do this for a while. How popular this would be, I don't know. But I think it would interest a lot of people who have the internet to back it up because they're saving money, still getting the same machine inside, but of course just probably saving a significant amount of money. But we don't know how much this thing is going to cost. It could be $20 cheaper, it could be $100 cheaper, we don't actually know. Potentially though they could be saving a lot of money, so we'll have to see. Let me know your thoughts guys, would you be interested, like say you're a fresh consumer, perhaps just getting into gaming or just getting into Xbox gaming specifically even, would you be interested on principle in a discless console even if it was an Xbox, would you be interested in one? Personally, I wouldn't because with console, I much prefer physical, kind of the opposite of PC, where I'm purely digital. But that's just me. That's my that's my view. I don't have brilliant internet here, so I'm not going to really want to download 50 gigs on that sort of internet. To be honest, if I can avoid it, but that's just again my personal view. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated, and I'll see you next time.